Yeah, welcome back to DXB Today, where uh, we're taking a look inside ourselves at the moment, trying to tap into our inner selves, our authentic selves, and giving you a little bit of advice, a little pointer as to how to do the same for yourself. How do you do that? Well, we are speaking to a number of experts across a number of fields, including our next guest, renowned hypnotherapist, uh, and of course, life coach as well, guiding a number of individuals to their fullest potential to achieve personal growth and of course, positive change. Welcome back to the show, Russell Hemmings. Good to have you back, Russ. Good to see you. Thank you. All well? Yeah, very well. Question, I mean, obviously I want to talk about, um, you've got your new pro program, obviously we've got all the bits and pieces, we've got so many questions for you. But one question I have is, you know, the question we've been posing ourselves about bettering oneself. Yeah. Hypnotherapy might be the route to that as well, yeah. but, but in terms of the, 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 the path to hypnotherapy for you personally, mm. was it addressing issues within yourself that you took you to hypnotherapy and have taken you on to try and make a change for others. Therefore, I suppose what I'm saying is, do you have to have a personal investment in order to help others? No, I don't think you do. I, I think it helps. I remember my journey was uh, on a mountain in Whistler in Canada and I was rushed into hospital. Um, and I was, I, did, I thought I was having a heart attack and I was gonna die. So I, my thoughts in my mind were, I don't wanna die in Canada. Um, it turned out the doctor said to me, he said, uh, your heart's fine, you can go. You, you just had a panic attack. Mm. Uh, but that was the beginning of the journey. So what happened was I went back to my room, I was on a conference, stayed in bed, and then all these feelings in my body uh, started to make me think that there was something wrong and they'd missed something. I went back to England and then I went to the doctors and I was in there 15 minutes and it was, there you go, mm. you're stressed out, yeah. take these. And, uh, you know, some of the, the things that are written on those packages, you know, they're quite scary in themselves, yeah. you know, side effects. So I took um, uh, the medication and, and it did help, you know, it did help, but it didn't change the thoughts that I was having. Yeah. They weren't addressed. And I, and I truly believe that that is something that needs addressing. If you, it's, it's the thoughts, we can reduce anxiety, but if you carry on thinking in a negative way, that maybe that, my racing heart was a heart attack coming on, or my dizziness was me going to faint mm. and need assistance in a mall and people would be staring at me, or my racing thoughts was, I'm gonna lose control. And I, go, I, I actually thought, am I going mad? Mm. You know, because I was getting these thoughts that, that were coming in and another thought and another thought on top of that. Uh, and I, I just had perpetuated this condition, but it was all based on my belief structures. And I went to see a gentleman, and fortunately he's not alive uh, today, but I went to see a gentleman that showed me how my belief structures were encouraging the feelings, which we all know, the fight to flight response. But um, what happened from that journey, he helped me through this. I then went back to work and realized, hang on a minute, I would actually wasting my time in the career I'd yeah. chosen, I was good at it. And I then went back to him and said, look, I'd like to do what you do. Mm. And he steered me in the right direction. And the rest is history. Exactly, exactly. Let's dial things back a bit, because there are some people probably watching right now thinking hypnosis is more about making you act like a chicken or something like that. So mm. for those who are completely unaware, mm. how does hypnotherapy work? Like say with something like anxiety, how would it work for someone? Okay, well, firstly, I, I use eclectic approach. So I'm using hypnosis and a cognitive approach. But how hypnosis works, is when you deliver hypnotic, hypnotic suggestions, they bypass our resistance, sometimes known as a critical faculty, and goes directly into subconscious mind. And that can be really effective for some people, but not for everybody, you know. Um, some people are more resistant. Some people actually uh, have uh, ideas about hypnosis that aren't based on reality. They're more based on Hollywood or, exactly. Bolly or Bollywood. And so they, in fact, I was working with someone this morning, they said, you know, oh, you know, what's going to happen? You know, so I had to make sure that the model, the reality of what hypnosis is, is not based on what they've seen on the television. You have to almost de-educate them about that because we've all seen, you know, Jungle Book where there's, you know, trust in me, go to sleep. Exactly. Well, actually, uh, hypnosis is uh, not a sleep state. It's, it's a conscious state and where the client or the, practitioner, uh, the patient is in control throughout. Yeah. Some of them go very deep and, and some don't. And so it's not something that they necessarily perceive 
as what reality is. So they could be, they could be basing their ideas on a, a movie, which is not true. Not true. Marissa? Because people think hypnosis sends you to sleep, but I, it actually wakes you up to your potential. And most doctors will tell you that 70% of people turning up at the doctors have illnesses not caused by disease organs, but caused by disease thinking. But that's actually very good news because it's much easier to fix disease thinking than it is to fix a disease organ. Mm. So that's what, Richard, is, that's what you're doing. You're fixing disease thinking. So, you know, you think this thought, because if it was a ladder, you have thought, feeling, behavior. And the thought always comes in front of the feeling and the behavior. So you don't have to change the feeling or the behavior. You've got to change the thinking. When you change the thought, it changes everything. Okay. I totally agree. I think, you know, disease, not a disease, this is. Yeah. You know, so, no, I totally agree. A, a lot, there's a lot of research based on this that 80% plus of our illnesses start in the mind. Wow. You know, ang anger's a, a, an interesting one where if we experience anger over a long period of time, high blood pressure follows, bruxism, teeth grinding, uh, acidity, uh, even psoriasis, even skin disorders can manifest uh, through our emotions. So yeah, totally agree with you. Incredible. Russell, um, we've just got a couple more minutes left with you. So I just sure. want to quickly ask, you've got a five day online course coming up. Can I you have. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. It's called, it's not just you. Mm -hmm. I, I want to give back. And I think people are not aware of the thoughts that they, that cause emotional disturbance. So when they have anxiety or anger or jealousy or guilt or shame or, or uh, anger, um, they don't necessarily look at the thoughts that they're holding that keeps that emotion in place. So they will live with it or even believe that that's the way they are. Right. And what I'm going to be doing is sharing for one hour a day over five days about the thoughts that create these emotions and showing them that they can change. They just need to take a step back, look at the thoughts, because just because we think something doesn't mean it's true. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing that over a period of five days. And the good news is it's free. Fantastic. Wow. It's free. Cool. It's free. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> good on you. Good why on not? Man. We well, want to keep Russell here a lot longer if we especially could. Especially if it's free. That's exactly, sure, especially because it's free. Yeah. I didn't say, I'm going to charge you. <laughs> Is it just me? Yeah, Is it just, just me? You. Oh, the girls get it for free. <laughs> Thank you for that. We would love to pick Russell's brain a little bit longer. Thank you so much for being with us <laughs> on the show pleasure. today. And of course, yeah. we will try out that free five-day online challenge. But Amy is going to be putting Marissa on the spotlight. I am indeed. Ooh. It is time now for DXB in 60. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock and I'm going to give some quick fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's get that time on the clock. If you weren't a therapist or an author, what would you be doing? I think I'd be a detective. Oh, I love that. Your motto in life and in work? You're always enough. Perfect. Your first ever job? I was a waitress when I was at college and then I was a dog groomer. They were my student jobs. Fantastic. I like working with animals. Dog yeah, groomer's a great. good one. Your role model? I would say Gil Boyne, he was my teacher, he was an amazing therapist. He was and my father who always believed that you could change any child by making them feel they were fascinating. Fantastic. A superpower that you wish you had? I wish I'd had the confidence that I have now when I was younger. That would have been a great superpower to own it much earlier. Yeah, definitely. Now, I know you've been in Dubai a while now. Um, your go-to place in Dubai? Favourite so spots? Many. I actually love, I love going to Wright Market. I love it there because it's outside. They have all these organic vegetables. I keep finding places that I call Not Dubai. Yeah. Look, is it Al Kuz? I love Al Yes, Kuz. that's fabulous. Like in the middle of Marrakesh. Yeah. I love Al Sakao. So people think Dubai is all about bling and massive buildings, but there's so many amazing yeah, places. There's so much more to the city. But I would say Al Kuz and Al Sakao are my favourites. Fab. Our time's just run out, but I want to know why Dubai? Well, I came here to put my program into the school system here because they were so into I love Dubai because they just cut through red tape. We want that, that then we can have it. And um, it's just, I think it's the most exciting city in the world. It's so far ahead of everywhere else. And it's actually a very, very friendly city where I live. People are amazing. So I love it here. Fantastic. I make my daughter move in now because I like it so much. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that you love it so much. I love it. My husband <laughs> loves it too. We're very happy. Fab, that's great to know.
Marissa, we can't thank you enough. Thanks for guest co-hosting today. Great to have you back on the show. Thank so you. really appreciate your time, Anytime. your expertise and your insights. Very kind of you to join us. Russell, bless you. Always good to see you. Thanks very much indeed for coming on. All the best uh, with your forthcoming summit and of course forthcoming challenge as well. Uh, more to come right here on DXB today. We turn to, uh, well, we turn to the mode of music next to tap into our inner self with none other than Sana and his band. They're coming up playing live next. <laughs>